I always wanted to be an architect and uh, at 18 I went to university to embark in my architectural education and I worked as an architect for a number of years. After six years working with the National Building Specification, I started to work with organisations and to really understand the importance of information management. And that's when I started to get involved with the likes of the British Standards Institute and be involved in many committees on the development of information management standards. And for me, that enabled me to have a real direct impact on the industry and actually the transformational change in the industry. Well, I think unfortunately too many people die in our industry, despite some you know, great efforts being made in the last 20 years, it's still quite a dangerous industry to be in. And when we talk about BIM, we tend to talk about efficiency gains and productivity, but actually we can use information and information models as a way to make uh, sites safer. It's about communicating hazards and risks um, clearly and to all different stakeholders. So BIM has the real potential to make construction much safer and that in turn attracts new talent to our industry, something that we really lack. BIM is not just about technology, it's a combination of technology and process and people that's all underpinned by information. Now we need to realise that we all embrace technology and adapt at different rates of change. So it does require a mindset change. And it's about um, maybe empowering certain people within your office uh, to become maybe digital champions uh, and, and work with other people that are maybe a little bit more unfamiliar with the technology or a little bit more reluctant. So I think it's appreciating that people learn at different rates. It's really important that we embrace an open BIM approach and that means using non-proprietary file formats. Now that's important because it means that all stakeholders uh, and everybody involved in the construction industry and the process can be involved in that BIM process without being tied to a particular file format or piece of software. Now it's really important that we can exchange and transfer data information seamlessly. So being able to work in a non-proprietary way is, is fundamental to the BIM process. There's a variety of technology solutions out there. Some of them are focused on a particular phase of the construction process, while some of them cut across multiple phases of the construction process. If you are starting to evaluate the software, first of all, look at the value proposition. What is the end result? What is it that you're trying to achieve from this particular piece of software, technology or workflow? So that's really what you need to question. Think about the end in mind from the, from the outset. One output of the BIM process is the creation of an information rich model. That model will contain varying degrees of information depending on which phase of the construction life cycle we're in. And that information is going to be able to help us make better informed decisions. As we move forward and we use um, sensors, we can get access to real time information as well. So we're making informed decisions on the most up to date information available to us. I help my clients solve complex questions and problems. I help them move into the future by using advanced technologies such as machine learning and artificial intelligence to be able to make better informed decisions about their data. And that's going to help them reduce risk, it's going to create certainty, but ultimately they're going to get a better asset. Historically, the construction industry has been slow to adapt and change to technology advances, especially when we compare that to other industries such as automotive and manufacturing. I think there's no doubt that the 
current global COVID pandemic has accelerated that um, rate of change. For example, we now communicate um, in dispersed teams, often remotely, and we're using new collaborative processes and technologies in order to do that. When companies are starting to implement BIM, there's often uh, a, a knee-jerk reaction to just go out and buy new technology. That's probably not your starting place. You really need to think about what is it that you're trying to achieve with BIM? What are the deliverables? Where is the value proposition? So start to think about that high-level strategic wrapper first of all. And before you go out and buy new technologies, maybe consider your current technology stack and maybe are you utilizing that current technology to its full potential? So before you go out and make um, more investments, consider your current technology offerings that your company may currently have. When searching for a suitable candidate for a BIM management role, it's important that that candidate has a, a full understanding of the construction industry from technical to strategic. It's important that they just don't focus solely on uh, technology, but they also understand processes. They also understand workflows and standards. More and more when organisations are tendering for new projects, um, they are asked about their BIM uh, capability and capacity. So it's never been as more important as it is now to have that in-house knowledge and expertise when it comes to uh, BIM methodologies and BIM workflows and processes. In the UK, we're starting to move away from what we defined as BIM level two. Um, we now have the UK BIM framework we also have the introduction of uh, an international set of uh, documents, which is fantastic because it's starting to provide consistency on a global scale. We're starting to move away from the discussion just around BIM, but how does BIM fit in with other things such as the Internet of Things and big data? Personally, I gain an immense satisfaction from being a professor at Zuggerat. For me, it's really important that I have that balance between professional practice, but also academia. And I'm really privileged not only to work with some world-renowned professors, but also to work with uh, new talent that's entering our industry. And I can also learn from them. So it's often this two-way process. Mm -hmm.